Hey. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Welcome to the For All Mankind time capsule. The first season of For All Mankind kicks things off in 1969, with the world watching as the first man lands on the moon. But it's not Neil Armstrong. It's a cosmonaut from the Soviet Union. That is the premise of the show. What would change if the Soviets landed first? Spoiler alert, everything. First off, the Cold War only gets hotter, and the Soviets continue to rock our world with yet another first, putting the first woman on the moon. So, President Nixon, no Watergate in our show, folks, tells NASA they have two priorities, build the base on the moon and put a woman on it. That's where all these badass women come into play. Including yours truly. America's next Apollo astronauts. My character, Margot, the first woman flight controller at NASA, tracks their progress, making sure these women are up to the task. You're an astronaut. And for my character, Ellen, certain things have not progressed far enough. And Ellen still needs to hide her sexuality or risk her career and this incredible opportunity. But against all odds, this crew of amazing women knew they had to carry on, and carry on they did, with my character, Molly Cobb. Smile? Taking her place on Apollo 15. Maybe don't smile. And becoming the first American woman in space. Which is a milestone moment she embraces with every ounce of her typical enthusiasm. People cheering, they haven't done anything yet. Okay, okay. But she does discover lunar ice, which brings humanity one step closer to living on the moon. Houston, are you getting this on screen? That discovery leads to the creation of Jamestown, first NASA base on the moon. How about that? We're on the moon to stay. Things start to get crazy when Apollo 23 explodes on the launch pad, stranding Ed, Gordo, and Danny on Jamestown with no plan of return. There's trapped, and then they're stuck on the moon and gonna die trapped. And uh, as a result of this, Gordo starts losing it big time. Hey, what? I saw one. You saw what? There was an ant in my space. In your suit? I was feeling. No, calm down. Get get my helmet off. Get off. If NASA were to find out about Gordo's antics, it's over for him. So, to protect Gordo, Danny heroically breaks her own arm. <gasps> so Ed can send him back to Earth with her, and NASA will be none the wiser. That's crazy. You literally broke your own arm. Hey, a hero's gotta do what a hero's gotta do. That is true, but that also means Ed is now stuck out on the Jamestown moon base completely alone. Back on Earth, Margot takes Aleda Rosales under her wing. Oh my god. Congratulations. <laughs> as NASA continues to work towards getting Ed home. Meanwhile, Ed's wife Karen is home with Shane, their young son. Go to your room! Stressed, not knowing when Ed will return, Karen is stretched thin and distracted. What's going on? Ma'am, I'm afraid there's been an accident. Devastated, Karen is forced to make the most difficult call of her life. Karen? Ed spirals and spirals. Eventually, Ed snaps out of it, and he's alerted that Ellen, aboard Apollo 24, is floating past the moon without enough fuel to slow down and land. Margot devises a plan to use the lunar orbit and sends Ed up into space to rescue Ellen. This cannot be our, our, our best option. I'm not gonna stand here and let- This is my call. I'm in command here. Capcom, let's go. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Ed, coming up on 15 minutes left in the window. So, now or never. After a few super intense minutes, <laughs> Houston, we have capture. Oh. Margot's plan proves successful, and Ed returns to the moon safely with Ellen. Our first season ends with Ed returning to Earth to mourn with Karen and Ellen on Jamestown. Is there anything you'd like to say to anyone back home? Um, Torn between her heart and her career. I know I don't say it enough, but I miss you, and I love you with all of my heart, Larry. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, wait, not so fast. We also launch a huge rocket out of the ocean. Oh my gosh. It's massive. It's amazing. 